So I will move on now to a similar technique, which is um, known as ordinal logistic regression. And there's, an, there's a nice trick that you can uh, apply to the logistic regression model to make it suit ordinal outcomes. So if you remember from the last couple of sessions, that's an ordered categorical scale. And an example of that might be severity of a, a symptom, which is measured as mild, moderate or severe. And our logistic regression model, you'll remember, looks something like this. We have this link function, which is called a logit function, applied to the probabilities that we're trying to predict. And it links the data to the model onto the real scale, where we can fit the different independent variables into the model. But now we've got several outcomes. And the trick that's applied in ordinal logistic regression is that um, it predicts, it partitions these outcomes, so it predicts probabilities of the outcome being in a category less than or equal to i. So predict the probability of being mild, and then you'd have an adaption to the model to predict the probability of being mild or moderate in this case. So you could write your model a bit like this. These pi is the probability of being in each of the different ordinal categories. And what you model is the probability of being in a category less than or equal to i using the logit function. And depending on which categories you're modeling, then you have a different intercept term, this a value, which was just the same constant value in the logistic regression model, now has a different value depending on where you've partitioned your ordered categories. A bit to get your head round, but the model has the same format. It just has different intercepts for the different partitions of the ordinal categories. And we're not really interested in those intercepts. We're interested in these you know, the things we're actually fitting in the model. But by allowing the different intercepts, it does allow us to model ordinal data. And we'll just apply that now to an example. This was a trial of free treatments to lower blood pressure, and there was a side effect that was measured in the trial, which was whether or not the patients had cold feet. It was thought that this, the treatments could affect the patient's circulation and give them cold feet. And the patients were asked to rate this on a scale uh, between no cold feet at all, never, to all of the time, or some degree in between. And that was rated on a scale that could be labelled one to five. It was an ordered scale. So if we um, use SAS to fit an ordinal logistic regression model to that data, then the analysis table that we get out now has four intercepts, and they correspond to the four partitions of the five categories. But we're not actually interested in what these values of the intercepts are. It just sort of reflects the increasing odds as you look at probabilities of being in higher levels of category. But what we are interested in is the overall treatment effect, which SAS conveniently assesses. That's the overall effect of the free treatments and gives us a significant p-value, saying that cold feet on an ordered scale differed significantly between the three treatments. And then, we, of course, we'd want to go on and find out which pairs of treatments differed. This is something that most, all the types of models that we do tend to give you in the output, which is if you've got three or more categories, then it will compare each of the categories to the last category. So here this is comparing A to C and B to C, and it tends to give you output in, in that way. And if you want to compare A to B, you have to sort of specify some options to get that out. So these p-values relate to comparing to, to treatment C. So A was not significantly different in terms of cold feet to treatment C. But treatment B compared to C does have a significant effect. And as I said, <coughs> you'd then have to put another option into your model in the package to compare treatments A and B to see if they were also significantly different in terms of cold feet. In this model, it does allow you to adjust for factors um, if you want to, or take into account model structure by including more factors in the model. And one that we might have included might have been centre effects, because this was actually a multi-centre trial. We could have put that into the model as well and adjusted for it. And another thing we might do is um, pre-treatment, then cold feet was measured before the patients even had treatment. So we could increase the efficiency of the model by including the pre-treatment effects. So that's 
labelled by CF1 is cold feet at baseline and that was highly significant. So not surprisingly, patients who had cold feet before treatment tended to be the ones who had cold feet after treatment, but we still want to see if treatment effect is different in terms of cold feet, and it still is significantly different. So this analysis is quite useful. It's um, made it a bit more efficient and taken out some of the variability and allowed us to assess our treatment effects more effectively. I realised that was a really brief in introduction, but it's hopefully just made you aware that you can analyse ordinal categorical data using a modelling approach, basically, which allows flexibility in terms of what parameters are included. Very briefly, now going to just mention a very broad class of models, which are known as generalised linear models. And these are available for data with other types of distributions. They're not available um, for sort of general non-parametric data that doesn't have a distribution at all that we looked at last time. But if, for example, data, count data often has something called a Poisson distribution, there are other distributions available that can be modelled. Whereas before, we, for logistic regression, we had this logit function. There's a whole class of different functions which are broadly just defined by this f of mu, if that's mu is the predicted value in our model that are suitable for different types of data. Just gives a brief overview of the types of data that you can analyse using a generalised linear model. So we've got binary data, logistic regression, that's, you know, that's in fact one type of generalised linear model. Count data quite often follows a Poisson distribution and there's a different link function you need for that. That's simply just the log of the expected value. We've looked at ordinal logistic regression where we partition the data in different places and you still use the sort of logit approach. For categorical data, then you can, even if it's unordered, you can analyse that using a generalised linear model. And the convention usually is to look at ratio of the probability of being in a particular category compared to being in the last category and that can be modelled. And the last thing to add is even general linear models, which were for normal data, are sort of broadly fit into this class. And there's the link function is just the identity. It doesn't, you don't apply a link function at all.